Hi guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. So I've seen this video doing the rounds on YouTube and I really wanted to get involved. It's actually hilarious and I also think it will be really helpful to any pregnant ladies out there who need to pack their hospital bag. So today I'm going to be reacting to my hospital bag video, just letting you know what I did use and what I didn't use and seeing if there's anything ridiculous that I packed in there as well. If you're new here, my name is Barbie and I film motherhood and lifestyle videos and I'd love for you to subscribe down below. Also, make sure you hit the bell button so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. I post videos every Wednesday and every Sunday. And also, if you'd like to join me on Instagram, I'll leave my name up above. I post stories and reels on there daily. So come and join me over there. It is great fun. Before I start, guys, look at these gray hairs. Guys, I'm 30, all right? No joke, I'm getting old. But come on, like pregnancy and postpartum is kicking me in the ass. The hair loss, the grey hairs. I'm like in desperate need of a postpartum glow up. If anyone wants to see a postpartum glow up video, let me know down below and maybe I'll film that. If you haven't seen my original what I packed in my hospital bag video, I'll leave that linked up above. And I just want to say I'm looking at myself now and I look like I've got my shit together. But deep down, I am heavily pregnant hormonal. I remember filming that day and it was really, really hot. So I probably got some really bad under booby sweat going on. And yeah, just know, just know that I am a woman on the edge in this video. <laughs> so I've got one bag for me, one bag for baby and one bag for the most important thing, snacks. Sorry, I, I, I shouldn't have said that. The baby bag was the most important thing. Baby was the most important thing. So I'm going to start off by showing you what I'm taking in for me and everything that I need is going to be in this big cabin bag and I just thought this would be the easiest thing which I can fit the most into and can wheel it in and wheel it out. So the cabin bag, like little luggage bag, was definitely a good shout. I've heard some people say that it takes up too much space in the room. That was not a problem for us at all. We had it open the whole time and everything was really easily accessible and also yeah when we were coming into hospital Tony was carrying so many things so it was great to have one bag at least that he could wheel along. So I've tried to organise everything in a really easy way. So so everything that I need for labour I've tried to keep at the top of the bag here and then everything inside I've tried to organise in a way that Tony can find it or if I have to have an unplanned c-section um, whoever's helping me get things from my bag will be able to find it quite easily. So before we went into hospital I did run through the bag with Tony. Lots of people recommend for the partner to actually pack the bag so that they know where everything is but we didn't have time for that. I just packed it and then I gave him a tour of the bag before we left and that worked absolutely fine. So I don't really know if I've overpacked or underpacked with everything going on at the moment um, we're not allowed to have visitors in so I thought let me take a few extra bits just in case I need to stay a bit longer than so I was actually only in hospital for one night um, if you haven't seen my birth story video I'll link that up above and I would definitely recommend watching it if you're pregnant because it's a really good one to get you ready for birth here's what I've got so oh also at the top of the bag I've got my birth preferences so all my maternity notes are actually on the app so I don't need to pack those with me but I have filled in the birth preferences form from the positive birth company because we were doing hypnobirthing and they have a template where you can just put in all the things that you want your midwife to know before you go in so I've got that printed and at the top I have so lots of people say don't bother with the birth plan it just all goes out the window but I am so glad I wrote down my birth preferences I gave it to the midwife as we arrived and I'm pretty sure she read through it at some point because she respected everything that I wrote it's more just like a document letting your midwives know what you would prefer under different circumstances um, it's not a set plan as such um, I also said things about how I would like the actual birth to happen and things like that um, I have included all of that in my birth story video so I'm not going to go into it but um, yeah I would recommend doing a birth plan I've got a sleep mask as I mentioned we've been doing hypnobirthing so hopefully I'll be able to wear this and it will keep me a little bit zen and focused. So I didn't use the sleep mask at all during labour but I did use it when I was on the ward just because there were lights and stuff and I'm really sensitive to light and yeah I did use that after giving birth. Also to help me with contractions I've got this Clary Sage essential oil and a flannel. Um, my sister-in-law told me that she used some of this on flannel and she was breathing through her contractions with it and it really helped calm her so I got that just in case it might help me as well. So I did actually use that. I was using the Clary Sage essential oil a lot um, in the last few weeks of pregnancy I was having baths in it 
It's supposed to help induce labour and it's actually like a really calming, lovely scent. If you're like me and you like to have like nice scents around you, I love burning candles and having reed diffusers in the house and stuff like that, then this might actually help you. Um, was it a necessity? No, but I did enjoy using it and it mixed things up a bit, you know. You're in labour for a really long time, so it's nice to have little pick-me-ups and things like that. I've also got this cordly face spritz. Don't know if I'm actually going to use this, but I really like the scent of it and I thought it might be a nice refreshing thing to use. I want to say during labour, but it probably won't get used, but it might be a nice little pick-me-up after labour when I'm in hospital. So so I didn't actually use that in hospital. I probably didn't need to pack it, but I did use it a lot postpartum. You know, those first few days where you're just really, really tired, you feel a bit gross. It was a really nice pick me up. It's a really lovely, fresh scent. And yeah, I did use that a lot in those first few weeks, I remember. So this is the Cordly Beauty Elixir Spray. I've got this handheld fan, which I got from Amazon, and it's actually amazing. <sighs> It's actually really annoying me that I've got it packed away because it would be so good at the moment. It's so hot. Um, but yeah, I thought this would be good during labour if I get really hot. I did take that out of my bag because it was so hot those last few weeks. Kian was born in June. Do you remember the heat wave? That was me, heavily pregnant. I did actually use that during labour. So this is something I didn't know about beforehand, but you can overheat during labour. So I spent the majority of my labour in hospital in the birthing pool. And although the midwives were checking the temperature every like 10 to 15 minutes, there was a point where I started to overheat. I didn't realise that the baby was overheating. So um, they did get that fan out and they tried to cool me down. So I am very glad that I had that in the end. And I've also packed some of these Cool and Soothe Soothing Gel Strips. Again, this is something that someone recommended to me. If people are telling me to get stuff for labour, I am buying it because whatever is going to make this birth easier, I want to have in my bag. So I've got three of these cooling gel strip things. I didn't use them at all. In fact, I wish I'd busted them out and used them when I was pregnant at that point. I think they would have been more helpful then. I've got some gum and mints just to freshen up while I'm in hospital if Tony wants them. I'm pretty sure that Tony used those. Probably good for your birth partner, especially when they're like in your face, trying to like talk to you and coach you. They gotta have nice breath, you know what I mean? Lip balm, I've heard this is really important, especially when you're doing hypnobirthing, you're breathing through your mouth a lot. So I thought that um, my lips are probably getting really dry and I would need, I don't know, I can't remember about lip balm, but you know, I keep lip balm on me anyway, wherever I go. Lip balm, I've got a couple of these actually throughout the bag. <laughs> I've got an extra long phone charging lead and I need to just remember to pack my plug for it as well. I'm taking a battery pack as well, um, just in case I can't charge my phone in bed or I don't know, I'm just taking it, I thought it might be handy. I've got some hair bubbles as well. So I did actually use the battery pack. When I stayed overnight in the ward, I just couldn't be bothered to find a plug. And also like you're so excited once you've had your baby, you just sit there taking videos and pictures and like looking at the baby. So I did use the battery pack that night in case I want to tie my hair back. And I've got this pair of headphones. They're just a really old crappy pair of headphones. But I do think that in the birthing suite, they've got like Bluetooth speakers and stuff like that as well. Um, and I've also got another pair of like over the ear headphones over the ear headphones which I'll take with me. I probably used the hair bubbles but I didn't use the headphones. Um, we actually ended up taking a Bluetooth speaker with us and I used it when I was at home in early labour just to kind of set the scene, you know, relax a bit and then we did put it on in hospital as well. I made like a Spotify playlist of like loads of songs that I like, you know, like really lovely soppy songs and I think by the end I was just kind of throwing like songs into the playlist and I remember there was one point where we were in the birthing suite. I was going through my contractions. I remember this was near the end as well because I was really just like not with it. So a song came on. I think it was by the weekend. And it was like one of those really dirty R&B songs, you know, like really graphic. And it was like, it was really, really filthy. And I remember looking at Tony and looking at the midwife and they were both like squirming of embarrassment. And I was just kicking back in the birthing pool, like laughing at them, just like bathing in the joy of their uncomfortableness. It was hilarious. And then eventually I think I was like, yeah, you can change the song if you want. And Tony was like, what is this playlist that you've put together? So up in this couch here, I've got my first Ziploc bag. I bought these Ziploc bags from Amazon. I thought they would be really handy to separate stuff out so that I can quickly grab whichever one I need or Tony can grab them. But they are quite bulky. Like when you close them, there's quite a lot of air in them. So they take up 
quite a lot of room in the suitcase. Um, I don't know if I would recommend these. Maybe just like a normal Ziploc bag will do. You don't need to go bougie and get stupid ones for Amazon. Why am I going into so much detail about the Ziploc bag? And it bag. makes it a bit hard to see what's... <laughs> the Ziploc bag idea was really, really helpful, actually, especially when it came to um, picking up my clothes and Kian's clothes and that sort of thing. So I would recommend putting them in Ziploc bags. I'm not going to go into any more detail about which bags, you know, you can make your own decision <laughs> inside. Um, but in here, I've got all my like Still bag. bits. <laughs> so I've got this, um, my expert midwife spritz for your bits. Again, I've heard so many people rave about this. I don't know if it will work for me, but anything which is going to help my lady bits after I've pushed a baby out, I will try. I've got some Lansnow nipple cream and I've also got a few of the Lansnow breast pads. I haven't taken too many of these. Well, I don't think I've taken too many of these. <laughs> oh, bless me. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Right, the spritz for your bits did not work for me at all. In fact, it actually burned. It really, really hurt. I don't know if I'm going to recommend that one. And also, like, how many breast pads have I <laughs> what did I think was going to happen to my boobs? I didn't use a single breast pad in hospital. I didn't use nipple cream. Um, maybe I would have used the nipple cream if I was in there a bit longer. When you first give birth, you have colostrum come out. So it's not like leaking everywhere. That doesn't happen till about day three, if you're lucky. Because I heard that your milk doesn't really come in till day three. So, um, really? yeah, you won't need oh, them so at I the beginning. Know. But I thought I'd learn a few just in case. Yeah, so, so moving beginning. on to the main part of the case, I've got a light silk robe from Primark. Um, it's the middle of summer and it's really hot, so I didn't think it would be worth taking in a big dressing gown. But I thought I'd take this just in case, um, in case I feel a bit uncomfortable walking around in a nightie or I do want something to cover up with. I've got this. I've got a couple of pairs of socks and one pair of fluffy socks. I did use the nightie and I used one pair of socks. I didn't need about six. Got a laundry bag just to put all my dirty clothes in. I had a few people ask me where I got that laundry bag from. I'm pretty sure I nicked it from a hotel. Got some makeup wipes just in case I want to freshen up. I've packed a bikini just because I really would like to have a water bath. At the moment, the hospital are saying that no water baths are permitted because of COVID, but I'm really hoping that by the time I go into give birth, they might have lifted that rule. So I packed it just in case. I don't think I used the makeup wipes, um, but I did use the bikini. I wore the bikini top when I was in the birthing pool. I didn't wear any bottoms because, you know, you're giving birth. There's a lot of stuff coming out. You don't need to wear bottoms. Um, maternity pads, I've got a pack of 10 and I've also got another pack of 10 in my baby bag just because it wouldn't fit in here. Obviously, I used the maternity pads. I actually underbought maternity pads for when I got home. I needed so much more than I thought I would. Um, you're just bleeding so much after birth. So yeah, I would overpack on maternity pads. You can never have too many. I've got a pair of flip-flops in this zip block just so that I can walk around in a nice hygienic way. So I've packed two bras, the first of which is just this really soft um, Medela sleep bra. I got it from Amazon. I didn't think I'd be want to be wearing anything too like padded and heavy straight after giving birth. Um, and then I've also just packed this one from Primark. I've been wearing these throughout pregnancy and it's just got pads. It's not underwired, but again, it's really soft and stretchy. So I've got two. I don't know if that'll be enough, but I'm sure like if I wear breast pads and stuff, they shouldn't get too dirty. I've got, I did use the slippers. Obviously you need to pack slippers if you're going to stay in a hospital. I didn't wear a bra in hospital. I obviously needed one when I left, but those bras are actually really good for postpartum. And I still actually wear the sleep bras to sleep now just because I'm worried about you know the sagging situation but yeah those um Medela bras are actually lovely one ziplock bag labeled pjs and in here I've basically just got loads of the same nighty I got I think I got four pairs of these from Boohoo so that grey nighty by the time I'd finished with it it had two like huge grey nipple cream stains on it. Um, don't buy grey pyjamas if you're planning on breastfeeding because it just gets stained by nipple cream. But yeah, I did use these nighties from Boohoo and you know what? They were perfect for postpartum. They had the little buttons down them. It was also really hot during that time. So I pretty much just wore them for like the first month of Kian being born. And then after that, I just threw them all away and bought me some nice, lovely pyjamas 
um, because after I'd been wearing them for a month, I just needed something a bit more luxurious. It's all in different colours and it's just a long nighty and it's got buttons so that I can breastfeed easily from it. Um, it's really hard to find like feeding suitable nighties. Um, also, I'm really short and I didn't want one that comes up really, really long on me and this one just fit really well. So I bought four of them in the same colour and I've packed all of them. I thought one of them might be a good one to actually give birth in as well. So anyway. So I only really needed one because I stayed overnight and I didn't give birth in it, I gave birth in the bikini top. I've got a load of these. I've got a grey one, I've got a spotty one, I've got a black one and oh actually this one's a little bit different. This is just a normal IT and it says <laughs> I totally forgot I even own that nighty. Where is it? I haven't worn it once. Like, I need to dig that out. Mummy and me on it, which I thought was quite cute. In this pouch, I've got knickers. So I've got a few of these disposable knickers from Boots. And then I've got some big ass knickers down here. Wait till you see. These are like full on, full brief. But they are like huge. Huge! I mean, come on. You could probably fit the baby in there. Like, look at the size of them. Um, I've got about five pairs of those, I think, and then I've got another five in my cupboard waiting for me. So the disposable briefs are amazing. I used all of them. Um, it's just, you know, blood gets everywhere and it's nice that you can just take them off, throw them away. They're really stretchy, really comfortable. Um, and then I think I did move on to like the big full briefs, but it wasn't that long until I was back in like normal knickers. So yeah, I wouldn't buy 10 pairs of them, maybe like four pairs. When I get home, I actually can't wait to wear these. <laughs> they look so comfortable. <laughs> I've got my toiletry bag. I'm gonna quickly run you through what I've got in here. Some of this might be ridiculous, but I don't know. Um, I've got a hairbrush. I've got my lens solution. And then before we go into hospital, I need Tony to pack my lenses and my glasses for me. I've got some Nivea face cream. I've taken this Rituals like body cream just because I do have really dry skin on like my legs and arms and stuff. I don't know if I'll bother moisturising but I'll take it just in case. I've got a toothbrush, one for me and one for Tony and also um, some toothpaste, another lip balm, some more hair bubbles. I packed this shower cap with all of my like shower gel and shampoos in it so I've taken a little molten brown shower gel and also the Maui minis so I can wash and shampoo my hair. I've got a, what is that, exfoliating cream? I don't know, am I gonna use this? It's just a little tester. Just, uh, I think these are two little Clarins face wash testers in case I do wanna wash my face. Um, so I used all of that apart from the shampoo. After I gave birth, it was quite late, around nine o'clock, and I went for a shower, and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna pamper myself a bit. I didn't wash my hair, because I just couldn't be bothered. I knew I was only staying there for one night. But I did use the Molten Brown Shower Gel, I um, moisturised with the Rituals Lotion and I washed my face with the Clarins Wash. So I did use all of that and it was actually really nice to have it with me. You know, the hospital showers aren't that nice. So it was um, just a little pick-me-up after giving birth and yeah, I enjoyed using it. Um, so that's all my shower stuff. I've got some Cantu um, Coconut Curling Cream. Um, if I do wash my hair, then I can just put some curling cream in it and let it dry. And then lastly, I've got a little, um, I think this is a Bobbi Brown. Yeah, I've got like a mini Bobbi Brown um, eye cream. And then for makeup, I've kept it really minimal. I'm just taking a concealer and a brush and a powder and a brush. I really, really don't think I'm gonna wear makeup, but if I do wanna put a bit of concealer on just for like the first photo with the baby or something like that, then I've got these. I did use the eye cream when I had my little pamper um, and I didn't use any makeup. But you know what, I kind of wish I did. I didn't get any nice first pictures with Kian and the ones I do have, I just look so tired and my boobs hanging out in it and you can see my nipple. So I didn't have any that I could like share on Instagram or anything or share with family. So um, yeah, in hindsight, if I have another baby, I think I would just put a little bit of makeup on and get like a really nice first picture, um, not loads, but yeah, I should have probably used that. Um, so that is everything that is going in my 
wash bag. Um, I've got a towel. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've kept everything very dark just because I've heard that you're bleeding a lot. So I've tried to keep my color palette as dark as possible. Lastly, I've packed my day clothes. I've packed them right at the bottom because it's probably the last thing I need. I really doubt I'll be changing out of um, a nighty apart from to go home. So um, I didn't know how hot it would be. So I packed a gray smock dress. I've got that. And then if it is too cold for a dress, then I'm taking in um, just a big white t-shirt. I think this is just like a plain white All Saints t-shirt and it's really big and some black like loungewear bottoms from H&M. I didn't use the towel. I ended up just using the hospital towels because mine was packed right at the bottom of my bag and I couldn't really be bothered to get it out. Um, to go home, I wore the black loungewear bottoms and the white top and they were fine you know you're just leaving the hospital so that's everything i'm taking in for me i really hope that i've got enough stuff i'm trying to stay positive and think that i'm going to be in and out of hospital within six hours because that's how quickly they're trying to get um uh, blah, 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 people out of the hospital at the moment they've said that there's like a six hour discharge it's only if something kind of goes wrong that i would need to be in long so yeah, because of COVID, they were very quick to get people out of hospital. I gave birth on the Monday evening at six o'clock. And I think by like 12 o'clock, one o'clock the next day, I'd um, been discharged. They just basically did a few checks of Kian in the morning and they really were very efficient about it. I think usually that would take a little bit longer, but they also, and they also, you know, checked that he was latching on properly and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I was out of there, no hanging about. And I was delighted about it because, you know, it's not nice being in hospital. I hate being in hospital. And I just wanted to get home with my baby. So it all worked out in the end, thank God. And even though they've said no visitors, like surely someone will be able to drop off the bag for me if I really, really, really need extra stuff. I'm gonna pack this all back up and then I'll show you what I'm taking for Bubba. Oh God, it's so hot today. Um, I'm probably gonna be taking this water bottle in with me as well. So I actually packed the bags myself, but a really good tip that I was told was to get your partner to pack the bag so that he knows where everything is. So after I packed it, I went through everything with Tony and I've shown him like where everything is in each compartment. And also he's made a list on his phone of all the like last minute things he needs to pack and where he can find them. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've also got a lavender room spray which I'm going to pack as well, but I keep that on my bedside table. I use it when I do like my hypnobirthing meditations and stuff like that. So he's got a list of all the like last minute stuff he needs to pack, like glasses, lenses, that room spray. Um, I want to make sure that I'm wearing a hoodie when I go in just in case I get cold when I'm in the hospital and need a hoodie. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad we did that. Just before we left, Tony just whizzed around the house and picked up the last minute bits. That lavender room spray we also used a lot during labour. Also, Tony put some like carrier bags down in the back of the car in case my water broke and stuff like that. So it's good to have a little list so that he knows what to do. And then also in regards to hypnobirthing, a lot of people have recommended to take in like battery powered fairy lights or battery powered tea lights and things like that but um, I'm not going to take those just because I had a look at our hospital website and the birthing centre room seemed quite set up for hypnobirthing they seem to really promote hypnobirthing there so I think that it will already be quite like a nice calm environment and I'm thinking the more stuff I take with me the more stuff I have to remember to pack away and bring home with me and it might end up just stressing me out more now I'm rambling so I'll show you what I've got for Bubba this is actually what is going to be his baby bag. We got it off Amazon and it's really good. It's got quite a few compartments. So yeah, I didn't actually need to take any of that with me. I remember the birthing suite did have a few little LED candles around. Um, the only thing I wish about that birthing suite is that they had like blackout blinds or some sort of blinds. I remember the room just being really bright the whole time. I think the experience would have been a little bit nicer if I'd had the dim lighting and, you know, little flickers of candlelight. But, you know... It was fine. So in the front here, I've got some cotton wool. Um, this was on our hospital checklist. They say at the beginning, you should wash the baby with cotton wool and water, but I've heard that the first poops are also like tar. So it's really hard to wash with cotton wool. Um, I don't know, I'm taking it just in case, but I've also got wipes. We've got three bottles of Cowngate infant milk, just in case we can't breastfeed. <laughs> So, wait, what was it? The wipes, oh, uh, cotton wool, but I did use the cotton wool to clean up his 
meconium is it called the first poo i had to call the midwife and ask her to show me how to do it because i didn't have a clue i called the midwife like every 15 minutes if the baby woke up if the baby pooed if the baby did a sick like I just didn't know what to do I've never been around babies and they were so sweet and so lovely and they helped me so much ziplocs yes I do love the ziplocs and I've actually labeled these so in this one we've got vests baby bros and blankets so I've got three little sleep suits these were like the all-in-one sleep suits i think now watching this back i'm thinking why did i pack five nighties for myself and three baby grows for my baby that was so silly you need to take at least i want to say six baby grows I was like struggling by the end. He had like pooed on them. I didn't know this, but when babies are born, they throw up a lot. They've got a lot of mucus in their lungs and things like that. So um, Kian was actually throwing up a lot and also he was pooing a lot. So I had gone through all of those baby grows and all of the vests. I would definitely pack a few more than three, even if you are staying for just one night, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. And you know, you want your newborn baby to be in lovely fresh clothes. They're just, oh, it's making me miss my little newborn. <laughs> these are all from Next. Um, and they've got the little scratch mitts built in and little feetsies. And these are all in, um, these are small. I think it's called first size. So it's not like newborn, it's just a little bit bigger than newborn. I think it lasts for like the first month or something like that. Oh my God, they smell so good. They smell like baby. I've got a few little vests like these. I've got two without sleeves and one with sleeves and then i've got a little blanket just in case we need that to wrap him up in when he comes home we did use the blanket always handy to have a little blanket when you've got a baby in this bag i've got muslins mitts bibs socks hats cloths again don't know if i'm going to need any of this but i'm packing it just in case um i've got one pair of socks one pair of mitts i've got this little hat <laughs> it's got like a little dinosaur <laughs> Kian is three months old and that hat still doesn't fit him. I don't know what we were thinking, buying such a huge hat for a newborn. We did put it on him when he left the hospital, but it was literally like covering his face, poor baby. Thing on the back of it, it's quite cute. I've got two regular muslins and then one swaddle muslin and then I've got two bibs. Hopefully that should... I didn't put a bib on him, I didn't use the bibs. I used one or two muslins, I didn't use the swaddle muslin, and I didn't use the scratch mitts or the socks because the next baby grows have the scratch mitts already um, as part of the baby grow, so I didn't need those. Think? If there is anything I don't have, someone's gonna have to drop it off to me. Um, and then at the bottom here, I've got one pack of newborn nappies. These are the ones from Aldi. And I've got another pack of maternity pads. These are for me in case I run out. Um, and yeah, that is everything I've packed for Bubba. I haven't packed too much, I don't think. And then lastly, for snacks, we've just got the same freeze bag and I'm taking in some of these uh, kind bars. They're just like peanut granola bars. They're for Tony in case he gets hungry. I've got oh, sorry, I didn't stop at the nappies. Yeah, we you, I took one packet and that was fine. Some jelly babies. Oh, he's got two packs of crime bars. Um, jelly babies and Starburst. These are for me to kind of help me keep my energy up. Although I'm much more of a chocolate person, so uh, I might have to put some chocolate in the bag as well. And then I've got four of these like flat Lucasaid sports. Um, I don't know, someone said that these are good again for energy, and apparently the fizzy ones make you feel quite sick, so the flat ones are better. So we've got a pack of those. So I didn't use the wipes, I used cotton wool and water. And then when it comes to snacks, I didn't want to eat anything when I was in labor. I thought that I would, you know, have a little munch here, a little munch there, cause you know me, I love my food. But at the time you're just so like, you're in labor, <laughs> you've got contractions coming. I felt quite sick. I actually got really bad heartburn from the gas and air as well. So I was not interested in eating or drinking anything. Tony obviously had a few of the snacks. Um, he was such a saint though he didn't eat the whole time I was in labor um even though I kept asking him like are you gonna eat anything you should eat something the hospital did give me lunch though they gave me a sandwich and a drink I think 
And then at night after I'd given birth, I got a hot meal, which was lovely. And then, oh, straight after birth, I was given like, you know, the classic toast and tea, which was very, very nice. But I did really enjoy the Lucozades. Tony was like force feeding me Lucozade when I was in the birthing pool. And then straight afterwards, I think I downed like a whole bottle of it because you're just so... Like you're so drained after you give birth. So yeah, I think that's it. That's everything I packed. And you know what? I did okay. There was nothing that I felt I needed that I didn't have. I think for my next child, I'll probably pack a very similar bag. In fact, it's great that I've got this video so that I know what to pack next time. Um, but I would, yeah, I would take more baby grows, more baby clothes because they are sick and poo and, you know, you just need them. If you're pregnant and you're thinking about packing your hospital bag soon, I hope that this helped. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do down below and I will see you next time. Bye.